Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out the PSP version of Split Second. This is a racing game previously released, if you saw on the title screen there, in 2010. And this is my next choice for PSP games that I like, that I would like to do a video on to serve as a backup. So, we have a fair amount to have a look at here, but for now we'll just go over to the options menu. You can save different profiles. I actually downloaded a fully complete profile just to see what that was like, but then I went and started again from scratch. You can change your control scheme from a scheme that uses the face buttons to accelerate to ones that use the shoulder buttons to accelerate and not much else. Thankfully, both of those will work depending on your style. There's your audio settings and even quick race, which is um, easy as a difficulty, uh, the game just gets harder as you go through regularly in the campaign mode. There is multiplayer, which I assume is ad hoc. I assume it's ad hoc. And there's really not that much else to it. I mean, you got your stats, you got your highlight reel, and you got your credits. I can't tell you exactly how long I've been playing this for because the save profile I downloaded kind of wrecked my own save time. But it's been about two, two and a half hours at this point, roughly. So let's go have a look at the single player. So you've got Quick Race, which is nice. You've also got Challenges, which are basically just arcade style, get as much score as you can within the time limit doing whatever things. So the majority of your single player content is going to be in your seasons. Now your seasons, or your episodes I should say, your season and your episodes, the general idea of the game is that you are part of a TV show, and in order to move on to the next episode of the TV show, you need to get enough credits by performing well enough in the individual events. That's basically the gist of it. There's nothing else in the way of story in this game, I promise you that much. So the general idea is you've got these individual events, and the higher you place in them, the more credits you get. And when you get enough credits, you will unlock the next elite race. And when you beat the elite race in either third or higher, I believe it is, you get to go to the next set of stuff to do. You do also have a special challenge that you need to beat a specific goal to actually unlock, as you can see, destroy 25 vehicles in this episode. We're going to go play a simple race, and you can see the cars here that I've unlocked, they unlock linearly, and I'm going to go with the Cobretti Vortex. I believe these are all based off real world cars, just with fake names, as you would Sort of kind of have to do, considering what happens to these cars in this bloody game, but we'll get onto that as soon as it loads. The loading isn't too bad in this game, as you can tell. Racing is as simple as it sounds, you gotta come first. However, this does also bring to mind the game's new mechanics. So you have a power meter down the bottom of the screen there. Now the power meter is filled up very simply. You can do things like you can in games like Burnout. You can get air off jumps, you can drift, you can draft, and you can get very close misses to things like power plays. And what are power plays, you may ask? Well, you can see down there that I've filled up one section of my meter. Now that I have the meter filled up, I can do what's called a power play. And the power plays, what the power plays do is they will cause part of the track to be destroyed. Whether it be by a simple helicopter dropping a bomb on the track in front of you, to part of the track itself getting blown to smithereens, there are an absolute ton of power plays on the same positions on every course. And some of the power plays are absolutely fantastic. There are power plays which involve things like aircraft control towers being dropped on the track, there are ones which involve things like a ferry being dropped onto a surface in front of you and you have to avoid it. Fuel trucks coming out, gas stations exploding, all sorts of neat little things. They have designed the courses in this game really damn well to incorporate as many neat power plays as possible. If you get your power play meter charged up to full as well, your will get access to red power plays, which are even bigger power plays. And they are absolutely massive. They can even do things like open shortcuts, or even entirely change the route of the track. So, <laughs> you wrecked yourself, awesome. If you couldn't tell, I kind of suck at this game. But to be fair, I suck at every game, so it sounds about right. But yeah. 
Just the general concept of the game is amazing. Just the general idea of beating the absolute crap out of people using obstacles on the road itself is great. And the power plays themselves are actually for the... Wow, I did not see that coming. Uh, the actual power plays themselves are skill, are skill based because if you know the tracks well enough, you can actually avoid most power plays. Sure, there are some that can be just sprouted on your side and you have no chance to avoid them, but there are ones like a helicopter bringing in a bulldozer to fly around the surface of the track that can actually be avoided if you know they're coming and you take preventative measures to do so. Nice shot from me there with a the great little replay cam to boot. Uh, the general downside of all of this though is that some of the power plays are kind of unfair. Now, the weird thing about the power plays in this game is that they have this annoying tendency to knock your steering out of whack. So, the general idea is that if a power play goes off even near you, like, you can avoid it, but if one goes off near you, your steering will actually kick out from under you a little, and you'll need to steer back into the way of the track that you were going previously. This is enough to cause you to crash. So if you're too close to a wall or whatever, and you hit the wall when you... Wow. Must have been a really tiny thing there. But yeah, if you're close enough to a wall and a power play goes off and you get hit by it, you will go flying into the wall and you will probably crash. You can also burnout style people, but it might not work out in your favor because the game's physics are a little weird like that. But still, if they needed to make the power plays just a little bit more dangerous, and I'm really not... I'm really not that annoyed by it. I'm just saying it's something that might turn you off the game if you want it to be entirely skill-based. It can kind of screw... It, it can definitely screw you. But I just thought it would be worth pointing out. So the driving itself. It is rather basic, all things considered. You basically just have drifting and uh, power plays, more or less. There's not much else in the way of... Um, any sort of neat driving mechanics, but the actual driving itself is still pretty satisfying. It's pretty heavy, but I'm still pretty early in the game. I might unlock cars that are actually better at that sort of thing, but for now at least, it feels a little bit heavy. It's not that bad though, not in the grand scheme of things. Let's show off one of the more unique modes next. This is Airstrike, and this tests your, not, um, your basically your driving skills more or less, as in your general ability to avoid sudden obstacles. It's actually a really neat idea. There's a lot of unique, unique ideas in the game modes in this game. So the general idea of this one is you have a helicopter flying ahead of you, you get three lives, and this helicopter is constantly going to be throwing missiles at you. There's also a couple of other neat modes that are around, like Detonator, which I'll be sure to show off as soon as um, we're done here. It's basically time trial mode, but all the power plays in the level will go off as you go past them. And when I said that the power plays are skill based, I definitely wasn't kidding. The power plays in this game are definitely skill based because you need to know exactly where they are in order to stand a chance to actually get a good score in detonator mode. And there are a couple of other neat things as well, like having to avoid barrels falling off the backs of trucks, it's got your typical uh, eli um, Eliminator mode, where you have to stay out of the last place. And there's a couple of other modes, I believe, that I have not unlocked yet, including, I believe, there's a mode that allows you to take advantage of the helicopter, at least in the console versions there were. I haven't seen if that mode is actually in this one yet. But still, you get a fair amount of single-player content to play. It's actually really nice, overall. And I, um, I'm enjoying the game quite a lot. It is a really nicely done concept for a racing game. And I am screwing this up badly. So I'm probably going to just fail and need to move on to the next thing. But you get the general idea of how the mode works, right? You just gotta try and avoid the missiles. It's nice for not relying on track memorization because the missiles are going to come down in a different place every single time. So you do need to be worried about exactly what your route through the level is going to be. 
The port itself is actually really good as well. Like, for a 2010 PSP game, this game runs really well. Obviously, I'm playing it on the Vita emulator, which might give it a little bit more performance than the native PSP version got. But, it still runs really well overall. It looks great. Like, seriously. This is a fantastic port. This is from Sumo Digital, the people who did the Vita port of um, um, Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. So, it has a fair bit of pedigree behind it, and it looks and runs really well. It's a little bit pixelated, which means you might have trouble seeing things, like really small things in the road up ahead that might screw you. And that has definitely happened to me once in this video already. But... For the most part, it runs really well, looks great, and sounds pretty decent as well. Although, you know, the, the sound in this sort of game isn't exactly something you want to focus on. But, yeah, there we go. I screwed it up, and so I get a game over. I only get 10 credits because I came in 7th. And there's the scores I would have had to have beaten. I wasn't doing very well. Let's go play a round of Detonator mode. I believe there is a Detonator challenge back here that I can try out. Here we are. On the port bridge. Perfect. So I get to use a, um... So I get to use a different track that we didn't just race on. Although I think Port Bridge is um, the one I actually did the race on at first. Yeah, it is. Alright, let's do this. Watch out, here come the power plays. Boom. So yeah, Split Second is available on the American PSP side of things. However, I don't know if it's available on the European side. There's the ship I was talking about. I don't know if it's... Whoops. I don't know if it's available on the... Oh, come on. On the European side of things. God, that added a lot of time. Thankfully, I'm not really playing for... um playing for score, I just want to play to show it all off, but yeah, the, the difficulty isn't exactly easy, I promise you that much. I don't know if it's available on the European store, but if it is, it'll be available under its European name, which is Split Second Velocity, which I don't really know why they called it that. They probably could have called it Split, um, split Second Power Play, it would have had a much more effective, um, would have been much more effective as a title. But yeah, I like Split Second a lot. I think it's actually a really cool game, a really cool concept, and it runs perfectly fine. There are one or two glitches that you might run into from time to time, including one in particular where if you go off a really high jump, you almost always go through the floor. But other than that, I haven't noticed anything particularly off about it, and it's a good little racing game. Runs great on the Vita, feels pretty good under the fingers. Jesus Christ, I need to stop doing that. I do that way too often. And there you go. That was a quick look at it. I recommend it. I find it to be a pretty fun game. If you're looking for a racing game with a fair amount of single player content, well, here you go. There are also a couple of other modes I haven't shown off, like um, uh, Survivor, but you get the general idea if I just say stay out of last place. It's a very common thing in um, things. And Elite Races are just... Basically the same thing as regular races, but with a bunch of named dudes for whatever reason. So, uh, no, actually, we'll go play one of the, um, not the quick races. We'll go play one of the challenges. So, yeah, destroy the rival cars, gain score on bonus time, drift around the track, and avoid the rival cars and barrels. Alright, that'll do. It's a fairly different one, so we'll do keep on trucking, because why not? The idea is just to get as many points as you can. Oh, I actually get to be the truck. Okay. Avoid the explosive cars and barrels and pass trucks again bonus time. Alright. Cool. Easier said than done, probably. But let's give it a shot anyway. The overall theme is pretty ridiculous as well. Like, seriously. I mean, it's a great theme. Don't get me wrong. But the, um... Whoa, up it goes. It's a great thing, don't get me wrong, but it's still bloody ridiculous, and it's great for that. It's also very pretty. 
They did a good job with the skybox. It's got that weird, um, translucent-ish, um, grid-like effect that were on a lot of, um, PSP games like this for better scores. But, yeah, I, I still appreciate a good skybox, and this looks great. Multi-trailer drifting and I'm pumping the... Get out of there. Jeez, please. Really not that much else to say about it, in all honesty. It just, it just works. Really nice. Wanted to get the... Ah, oh, right. So hitting the cars actually resets my score multiplier. That makes sense. You know what's a shame it doesn't have, though? Advertisements. Like, imagine this having, like, this weird little TV advertisements in the middle of races just to try and distract you while a power play's going on. It would fit the theme quite nicely, I think. These fucking explosive cars, Jesus. These challenges do get harder and harder the longer you play them. Like, look, the, 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 this truck is dropping a lot of bombs. In comparison to before, where it was barely dropping any, and there's a fair few more cars on the road, too. So at least the game isn't disturbingly easy. Fucking drifting trucks, good lord. Not dad's zone, dude. Awesome. I think we've got a three times multiplier going on, which is nice, but I'm about to lose it. There it goes. Oh, look at all those barrels! Oh, goodbye truck. I mean, car. Probably not going to get first, but I am going to get second, which is, whoop, there, there it goes, goodbye wheel. Yeah, I'm definitely going to get second, so. There we go. Yeah, split second is a great concept, executed really well. It's got a lot of skill-based driving as well, which you wouldn't expect to see in this sort of concept. But it's great. It works really nicely. The Vita version of the PSP version is great. And I fully recommend this if you're looking for a high-octane racer. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.